When we tried to count the number of labeled trees with five vertices, we ran into two difficulties. Deciding whether graphs were isomorphic, and deciding whether two labelings were the same. In the real world, we can distinguish between objects using a code. License plates distinguish between cars, social security numbers distinguish between workers, and UPC codes distinguish between commercial products. For trees, we'll use a peripher code. A few seconds' research on the internet will make you an expert on peripher codes. The problem is anyone could do that, so knowing the peripher code is essentially worthless. Remember, once an algorithm exists, a machine can do it faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human. What's more important than knowing about peripher codes? Here's a hint. They're named after the person who invented them. Remember, be the person who creates the algorithm. So let's see how we might approach the problem of creating a code for a labeled tree. So let's consider a different approach. If you build it, they will come. So what if we try to build a tree with five vertices? We might proceed as follows. We'll put down one vertex with its label, then add one edge at a time. And remember, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. We'll record our construction process using an ordered pair x, y, where the edge is the edge between x and y, and it's ordered, so x is the vertex being joined to, that's our existing vertex, and y is the vertex we're adding. So let's grow a tree. We'll put down vertex 3 first. We'll add an edge 3 to 4, then an edge 4 to 2, then another edge 4 to 5, and finally an edge 3 to 1. And so our tree can be recorded as the sequence. Now consider any path in this tree, say 1 to 3 to 4 to 5. For this path to be in another tree, the tree would have to include the edges 1 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5. And so our construction sequence would have to include either 1, 3, or 3, 1, either 3, 4, or 4, 3, or either 4, 5, or 5, 4. So given a construction sequence like 3, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2, 2, 5, we can immediately decide whether this is the same labeling. Now, while this gives us a way to identify distinct labelings, it's not always clear when the labelings are the same, or even possible. For example, this tree could have been constructed in the order 3, 1, 3, 4, 4, 5, 4, 2, but not as 3, 1, 4, 5, 4, 2, 3, 4. You might think for a moment why you can't construct the tree this way. And the fact that we could have different construction sequences, and some of those sequences are actually impossible, complicates the combinatorial question. So how can we get around this problem? A useful idea to keep in mind, it's easier to know where you've come from than where you're going. What this means is that if we build a tree by adding edges, there are many possible end results. But once the tree is built, there's only a few ways we could have constructed it. So rather than starting with a vertex and constructing a tree, let's start with a tree and work backwards. We grew the tree by adding a degree 1 vertex to an existing vertex. To go backwards, we'll remove degree 1 vertices from the tree. So consider a labeled tree. Remember, every tree has at least one leaf, a degree 1 vertex. By repeatedly removing leaves, we can reduce the tree to a single vertex. 
Now, a tree could have more than one leaf, so we have to decide how we're going to remove them, and we'll take the simplest option. If there's more than one leaf, we can always choose to remove the vertex with the lowest label. And again, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. As before, we'll track the vertices we remove by the ordered pair x, y, where y is the vertex removed, and x is the vertex it was adjacent to. So let's try that. Remember, we're looking for the lowest numbered leaf, and so the first vertex we remove is 1, is removed from 3, and we're going to record that as 3, 1. Remember, the vertex that remains is the first coordinate, while the vertex that was removed is the second. So now we look for the lowest numbered vertex, which is 2, which we've removed from 4, recording this as 4, 2. Next, our lowest numbered vertex is 3, which we removed from 4, giving us 4, 3. And finally, 4 is removed from 5, recorded as 5, 4. And this gives us the decomposition sequence. Since at every step there is a unique lowest numbered leaf, the decomposition sequence is unique. This means we could use the decomposition sequence as a coding of the tree. Or can we? While every tree has a unique decomposition sequence, the decomposition sequence itself won't be a code unless all sequences correspond to trees and different trees have different sequences. But do they? We'll take a look at that next.